So what's going on guys, I am Black Ops Amazing, welcome back to another video on the channel where today we're going to be taking a look at Richtofen being involved again in our zombie storyline. Right now in MW3 we haven't officially heard from him, there are hints and rumours from a few things that we can find in MW3, mainly notes which usually aren't too interesting, especially in this game, but there are a few people theorising that Richtofen is involved in MW3 zombies via him being the President of the United States. I'll just leave that one there, I'm not going to talk about that, but officially we've had no mention of him right now we are still halfway through the story so who knows by the end by the time we get to august or september things could be totally different and rick Tuffin is fully involved in mw3 but officially the last time we actually heard of him or from him was black ops cold war he was revealed to us in the final map forsaken as the director of requiem that was back in the 80s we are now in the year 2021 with modern warfare 3 so 40 years later a lot of time has passed and with Treyarch's next iteration of zombies releasing later this year black Ops 5 or Black Ops Gulf War, we don't know the name yet, they're just a couple being thrown around. Because Rick Toffin is one of the main characters and my personal favourite in Zombies, what will his role be when we do hear from him again? Because undoubtedly, 100%, he will be in this year's Zombies in October. So, so far in MW3 Zombies, we've seen quite a few familiar faces. We have Samantha, who we believe is the entity in the Dark Ether here, although I should also point out it hasn't been confirmed, but more than likely this is Samantha. We saw her get trapped in the Dark Ether at the end of Forsaken 40 years back, and it looks like she's still trapped in there. We also saw our Requiem characters, so Weaver, Carver, Strauss, and Grey dead around the table. Again, because we're still halfway through this story, we don't know exactly how they got themselves into this situation, but we did see at the end of Cold War, Richtofen had them imprisoned. So that's those people, but the other main character we saw in Cold War was Richtofen and he's the only one who we have yet to see in MW3. Well, like I said, the last time we saw him was in Cold War's Forsaken ending cutscene, where he was revealed to be the director of Requiem, and we saw on his computer screen a group memo of four different things he was working on. These read, the entity is acquired, all breaches sealed, Maxis locked within the Dark Ether, she is no longer a problem for Project Janus, divert strike team to Black Site 13 for indefinite containment, and I will shut down Requiem. Our agents can move on Weaver and the rest. Richtofen then got up out of his chair, picks up his briefcase and walked out of his office. And that was the last time we saw him in the year 1985. We are now in the year 2019 to 2021, almost 40 years later. Where is Richtofen and what has he gotten up to in that 40 year gap? A lot of these questions will be answered next year, but let's just go ahead and take a look at what we know because there's some really interesting storyline stuff going on with him here. The big one being Project Janus. We started to hear a lot about this towards the end of Cold War's story, especially in Mouth the Toten and Forsaken, but we never found out what it was. All throughout Cold War, Richtofen was working towards this project, completing tasks, one of them being making sure that Samantha was out of the way so it could proceed, but we never found out what Project Janus was. If we look at what Janus is though, which might give us an idea, in Roman mythology, Janus was the god of doors, gates, and transitions. He represented the middle ground between both concrete and abstract dualities, such as life and death, beginning and end, youth and adulthood, war and peace, and barbarism and civilization. And since movement and change are interconnected, that's why when you see Janus, he is symbolised as a two-headed image because of his double nature. So if Janus looks after passages, causes actions to start and presides over all beginnings, if he was the god of doors, gates and transitions, the first thing that comes to mind when you link this to our zombie storyline is the gateway to the Dark Ether, the transition between reality, the world that we live in, and the Dark Ether, the door between our world and that one. So if the name has any relevance, which obviously it does, then Project Janus must have something to do with a gateway to the Dark Ether. As to exactly what Richtofen is trying to do, we don't know. Is he trying to harness the powers of the Dark Ether for himself? Is he trying to gain access to the Dark Ether? Is he trying to open up a gateway? There are other possibilities, a big one, which I'm going to get into later on, but Janus was also represented as the middle ground between concrete and abstract dualities, such as life and death. Could that be what Project Janus has something to do with? Life and death? Is Richtofen trying to connect the two? Resurrect someone or multiple people? Bring them back from the dead? Is he trying to go to the beginning? Back in time? To change something? We aren't too sure, but one thing that we do know, story-wise, is that Richtofen had a family. 
If you look on his desk, we see two different images. The one on the left is of when Richtofen was a fighter pilot for the Blue Baron. And this is kind of a play on a real life situation because if you look up the Red Baron, you get the name Manfred von Richtofen. Basically, he was a top scoring flying ace during World War One. So I think that's just an Easter egg. The plane that Eddie Richtofen is flying being based off the Red Baron or Manfred von Richtofen. However, Eddie Richtofen did used to be a fighter pilot. And then the image that we see on the right of his desk is him and his family, his wife and his son. Now, from what I can remember, having gone through all of the intel in Cold War Zombies story loads of times, we don't officially get any information about Richtofen's family, but there are mentions in the zombie story of a boy and his mother and how they died. In Cold War Zombies, one thing that was made clear to us was that Richtofen seemed to retain his memory from his old life before he travelled from BO4 Zombies Tag of Toten to Cold War to this new universe when Eddie and Samantha in the end of Tag walked into the light to Cold War Zombies. Samantha lost any memory that she had before then. Anything to do with the Ether timeline, so Nikolai, Takio, Dr. Monty, Dempsey, everything, even her growing up with Eddie, all of those memories it seems were wiped. However, Richtofen did retain his memory. From multiple things he does and says in Cold War, look on his desk right here. He has a snow globe and what is inside of it? Dr. Monty's house. This is the exact same snow globe that we saw Samantha holding in the, I think it was the Zombies Chronicles trailer back in the Ether timeline. This was Samantha's snow globe. How Eddie has it, I don't know, but he's clearly taken it from when he was a part of the multiverse and then traveled here and he's placed this snow globe of Dr. Monty's house on his desk. So we have multiple bits of evidence that Richtofen has retained his memory and can remember his childhood, whereas Samantha can't remember anything from when she was a child, where she came from, her father, Richtofen, can and he knows everything about Samantha as well. So that's interesting but why all of this is important is because Project Janus is clearly the next thing that's going to unravel in our zombie storyline not with the current Modern Warfare 3 zombie story but with Treyarch's next game later this year Black Ops 5 or Black Ops Gulf War whatever they decide to call it. That game will be the sequel to Cold War that takes place after the events of Forsaken but before Modern Warfare 3 and since we saw that Project Janus was just unraveling well we can assume that's what the story is going to be about. But if it has something to do with gateways to the Dark Ether or life and death, if Richtofen lost his family, his wife and his son, could he be trying to somehow get them back? That's been one of the theories. And if you haven't been staying up to date with the Cold War story, there's a lot more to this than you might think. Because seemingly, if our theories are right, that's all this is at the moment. It was Samantha and Weaver that killed Richtofen's son and maybe even his wife. And through radios and intel in Cold War, we learn about this. In 1979, when the Iran Revolution kicked off, Western intelligence agencies coordinated with the CIA to ensure the SAR's safe extraction to the United States. But a lot of citizens and diplomats there weren't so lucky, Samantha included. And if it wasn't for Weaver's intervention in 79 and willingness to go off the books, she'd be a forgotten memory by now. She'd be dead. Weaver saved her. I want you to know that I've been in your shoes, and you can trust Weaver. He's a good man to have in your corner. A good boss. Back in the 70s, West Germany was a major investor and supplier to Iran. In exchange for oil and gas, we propped up their steel industry and aided their nuclear power program. I was there in 79 when the revolution kicked off. Western intelligence agencies coordinated with the CIA to ensure the Shah's safe extraction to the US. But a lot of diplomats and citizens weren't so lucky. Me included. If it wasn't for Weaver's intervention and willingness to go off the books, I'd be a forgotten memory by now. But not everything went as rosy as it seems because as we found out in the next audio log, because of what they did in the process, a child ended up being killed. Weaver. Hello, Sam. You look serious. My colleagues tell me you've not exactly been cooperative or forthcoming. Instead, you've been evasive. Obtuse, even. Ain't that just like me? This isn't a joke, Sam. I'm worried about you. 
We all are. After what I've been through, do you honestly think I'm joking? Sam. I thought I'd died and gone to hell. I thought everything and everyone I ever knew was gone forever. You've been to hell before, though, Sam. We both have. I was never going to leave you there to die. Like you did the boy. That's not fair, Sam. That was a different situation. We both did all we could. But not enough. He's still dead, isn't he? I can see you're agitated. So I'm gonna let you get some rest. I hope you feel better soon. I don't want to upset you. While Samantha was in quarantine in Cold War, as a part of her diary entries, she wrote, I'm writing it down. Not because I don't know what happened, but so that others will. My name is Maxis, Samantha Maxis. I know you're reading this, Weaver. And I know you feel the same guilt I do about the boy. I promised I would keep him safe, but we both failed him. The last thing I expected was for you to move as quickly as you did. The operation should never have happened. If I'd have known the steps you would take, I would not have told you the location. The house was supposed to be safe. We both feel the guilt, but I will always blame myself more than you do. I am not disappointed, I'm just angry. After everything I've done, you still don't trust me. I have been damned before and I wouldn't wish that upon anyone. Do you even remember when we first met? Sometimes I do, but other times, it seems more like a dream. All I know for sure is that it was a war zone, one that I feared I'd never be able to escape. In some ways, I'm glad you didn't claim me for field ops. Yes, I know it was you, because I don't ever want to go back. And then in her final diary note, she wrote, I remember waiting for your call. 10, 11, 12, the phone never rang. Instead, I saw the news of the explosion on TV. I couldn't sleep. 3 a.m. I heard a knock on my apartment door. You gave the keyword and I let you in. We'd never met face to face before. It was a shock to finally meet you. You were in a bad way. I did my best to dress your wounds, but it was the first and only time I ever saw you cry. You mumbled something about not knowing, about how sorry you were. You torched the place to cover your tracks after the hit. You said the boy was supposed to be staying with his mother, but he wasn't. He was there, in the house, while it burned to the ground. So we learn more information about what happened between Samantha and Weaver in Iran, and also what happened to this boy that they killed. It seems there was an operation that Samantha sent Weaver on. Whilst he was there, something went wrong, and in order to cover his tracks, Weaver burned down the house. But little did he know that the house contained a child. A child that Samantha had promised to keep safe. This child or boy was supposed to be staying with his mother. Weaver and Samantha thought he was, they didn't think he was in the house, so Weaver burned it to the ground. He realised the child was actually there. And in the final two radios that we have in Cold War from Samantha, she gives us a little bit more backstory. Hello, Sam. I'm not allowed to visit in person, but I just wanted to check in. Before the operation tomorrow, be there or be square. I know I can't tell you what to do. You wouldn't listen anyway, but seriously. I know my orders, Weaver. I assist with the infill, uh, but then... Um, you stand down. We can't risk any mistakes. We both know how badly things can go south if we act impulsively. You're talking about the boy, aren't you? And the mother. It wasn't your fault. It wasn't yours either, Sam. His name was Samuel. And I, we, will forever feel responsible for his death. I gave the intel to Weaver. The intel he acted upon. That's what we're all supposed to do, right? Act on the available intel. That's just what Weaver did. Act. Unfortunately, his actions resulted in Collateral damage that neither of us will ever be able to forgive ourselves for. I'm sorry. I know he is too. But I still have a terrible feeling that the events of that day may yet come back to haunt us. 
I just need you to know. I am sorry. In these final two radios, again, Weaver and Samantha are talking about the incident, about the boy's death, and how it wasn't either of their faults, but they blame themselves. And finally, Samantha reveals that this boy's name was Samuel. She gave intel to Weaver, he acted upon it, but unfortunately, Weaver's actions resulted in collateral damage. And as I've mentioned, the boy ended up dying. They also mentioned the mother as well, but from what we can tell, she didn't die since she was in another house. The boy or Samuel was supposed to be with her, but wasn't. He was in the house that Weaver burned down, not thinking anyone was there. So whether the mother is still alive or not, that wasn't confirmed. She may have also died in the revolution just in a different way, not by the hands of Weaver and Samantha. But this is where it all rolls back around to the beginning of the video with Richtofen. Was Samuel and his mother Richtofen's wife and son. All throughout Cold War Zombies, Richtofen has been very secretive and has been up to some very suspicious activities, especially regarding Samantha and Weaver. The whole idea of Requiem in the first place began with the Associate Deputy Director of the Directorate of Science and Technology, who was Richtofen. Basically, after the reactivation of the cyclotron at Project Henge Station the first time around, an emergency meeting was held in 1983. At that meeting was the US Secretary of Defense and CIA Director William J. Casey. Also present was Richtofen, being the Associate Deputy Director of the DSNT. And it was Richtofen who proposed the creation of the Office of Requiem, which would act as a subgroup to the DSNT and would be internally staffed, albeit under the CIA's firm control. We know Richtofen was then named the Director of Requiem, where he personally picked Requiem staff and he chose himself, Weaver, to be the group's Special Operations Officer. Richtofen specifically chose Weaver, along with Strauss, Gray and Carver. And what does he have happen to Team Requiem at the end of Forsaken's cutscene? He has them arrested in indefinite containment in a place called Black Site 13. Why would he do that to his own staff? his staff members that acted under his orders that did what he told them to do. And now in Man Warfare 3 Zombies, although as of right now we don't know exactly how it happened, we see Weaver and the rest of the characters that Richtofen had imprisoned dead around the table in Uzbekistan. Like I said, these events could be totally unrelated since Man Warfare 3 takes place in 2021 and Black Ops Cold War took place in the 80s, so a lot has happened between Cold War and MW3 Zombies that there is a chance that whatever happened to Weaver and the crew here had nothing to do with Richtofen imprisoning them. And also in Cold War Zombies, towards the end of the story, Richtofen starts torturing Samantha. Wake up. Wake up. Where am I? Where's not so? You will answer our questions. Do you understand? Who the hell are you? That's not important. What's important is who you are. What is your name? Fuck you. Where were you born? Kiss my ass. Your name is Samantha Maxis. You were born in Berlin, November 5th. Is that correct? Is that correct? I don't know. Everything is different now. Oh, I know that better than you. Where am I? You're in Block 8. A facility specifically designed to take care of people like you. Take care of people like me? You're here to undergo some specialized tests. What kind of tests? You'll find out soon enough. The Dark Aether changed you in many ways. I just need you to know how much. You don't know anything about me! Like I said earlier on, Richtofen knows who Samantha is, he knows they grew up together, he has memories from their past before Cold War, relating back to BO4 and BO3, whereas Samantha seemingly can't remember any of that, 
she can't even remember her friend, Eddie, Richtofen. Granted, he speaks to her behind glass so she can't see him. But Richtofen tortures her and then, in Forsaken's ending, she becomes trapped within the Dark Aether. And as we've seen in Modern Warfare 3, she is potentially the entity, meaning maybe she's still stuck in there now 30 odd years later. But all of this was a part of Richtofen's plan in Cold War. That's what he wanted. He wanted Samantha gone and he wanted Weaver imprisoned. There are ideas or theories, which is what they are right now, because nothing is 100% confirmed. But there is a chance that the boy that Weaver and Samantha killed was Richtofen's son. And you then bring up the question, has he been using Weaver and Samantha to get him back? Was that just a small part of a bigger operation being Project Janus? Is Project Janus revolved around him trying to bring his son and perhaps wife back from the dead by somehow harnessing the power of the Dark Aether or opening up a gateway? Is he attempting to travel back in time to stop that event from happening? There are so many other questions such as his name, Samuel. There is another Samuel in our zombie storyline that we are very familiar with being Samuel Stuhlinger. Is there the possibility that Richtofen named his son Samuel after Stuhlinger? Because whilst Richtofen or this version of Eddie as a child didn't know Stuhlinger personally, remember he was with the Ultima and Premise characters in the forest in Tagdo Toten. And whilst they were there, Richtofen was communicating with Stuhlinger. Not Eddie, I mean grown up Richtofen. So whilst Eddie didn't particularly know Stuhlinger, they weren't friends like that because he was just a child when he was alive. He did know he was friends with other versions of him. Stuhlinger helped them out during Tagdo Toten to create this one singular universe for the children to live in and grow up safe. Eddie did know of Stuhlinger's existence, so perhaps there is the chance that Eddie named his son Samuel after Stuhlinger. It could just be a coincidence, like how Samantha's dog is named Not So, Not So Fluffy. The other question is, well, why was Samantha in charge of looking after this child anyway? If she knew who Richtofen was, then I could say, well, maybe Richtofen told her to look after his son, but because she seemingly has no recollection of who he was, if this was his son that she killed, why would she be looking after him anyway? Was she friends with his mother, with Richtofen's wife? Why was Richtofen's family in Iran? We know Richtofen can speak multiple languages. Just going off the top of my head, I think it was like five languages he's spoken in Cold War. If Richtofen was the director of the DSNT, then there are very valid reasons why he could have been in Iran during 1979, during the revolution with the CIA. But Project Janus is the forefront of all of this. The main reason why Richtofen set up Requiem was so that he could work on Project Janus. Requiem was really just a front. We do know Richtofen is working under an unknown corporate board of directors. There are pockets that he has to align and shareholders that have to be pleased when it comes to Project Janus. And it's not only him, but it's also those board of directors that wanted Samantha dealt with as well. They saw her as a problem to Janus that she could get in the way. But now Samantha is trapped in the Dark Aether. He has the Forsaken captured for his own use. Requiem have been dealt with. Whatever Project Janus consists of in the next game, Black Ops 5 or Black Ops Gulf War, like I said, whatever Troyot want to call it, because it will be a sequel to Black Ops Cold War, that's when we'll find out fully what Project Janus is and what Richtofen has been up to. Does Richtofen exist in Modern Warfare 3 Zombies? There are slight hints that possibly he does. I know there's a few rumors and theories going around that he's the president of the US from Intel that you can find in MW3, but that's all they really are. And for me, there isn't enough to go on to say, yes, Richtofen 100% exists in Modern Warfare 3. If he does, he's going to be very old. That doesn't mean he's dead though. He could still be alive. We just haven't heard from him yet. And I also think there's a big chance that we just don't, which is why I'm focusing more on what took place in Cold War Zombies, because Modern Warfare 3 being a sequel kind of makes the storyline a little bit not irrelevant in this game, but it doesn't really help us, especially since we're still only halfway through it. And if we do end up finding out that Richtofen is alive in MW3, well then that pretty much spoils the ending of this year's Troyot game. That at least confirms to us that Richtofen won't die in it. So I'd be surprised if Richtofen's even officially confirmed in MW3 by the end of this storyline. But getting back to what I was saying, in BO5 or Gulf War, that's when we'll find out fully what Project Janus is and what Richtofen's been up to. Did Samantha and Weaver kill Richtofen's son and his wife? Samantha says in her final radio when she's talking about what Weaver and her did to this child, accidentally killing him in the house fire, she says, but I still have a feeling that the events of that day may yet come back to haunt us. But I still have a terrible feeling that the events of that day may yet come back to haunt us. Was that her foreshadowing those events of her killing Richtofen's son have come back to haunt us because Richtofen's now punishing them. He imprisoned Weaver 
and his actions led to Samantha becoming trapped within the Dark Aether. Obviously this story isn't finished, there is so much going on and right now we have a few theories to go with. And that's where we should kick off from in Black Ops 5, with Richtofen now fully proceeding with Project Janus. However, I don't think whatever he's going to store, whatever it entails, is going to be as simple as he would like. 